Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's September 2020 and we now have access to the first GPS INS guided laser guided bomb. This is a two in one bomb. We can use it purely as a JDAM in that we use the GPS INS guidance and it will guide all the way to the target, fire and forget, or we can use it as a laser guided GBU and we can guide it via our laser designator for the terminal part. We can have the fire and forget ability of the JDAM and the extra accuracy and the ability to hit moving targets of the laser guided variant. The bomb is 500 pounds. At the time of making this video, we can only have four, one on each station of stations two, three, five, and six. We will carry just two of them for this example and we'll take a T-pop. Request rearming. Let's look at setting the bomb up. I'm going to go into stores. I guess you'd usually do this in the air, but just to make it easier for me. It's a J82 laser, so a J down 80 Mark 82 laser. Click on it there. In the Harrier, we do not need to align this weapon at time of making this video. This may change in the future, so just be aware. Now, for this video, I'm going to assume that you are already proficient in the JDAMs, for instance, the GBU-38. I'm going to assume that you're already proficient in the laser-guided bombs, for instance, a GBU-12. Otherwise, this video would take a long time. If you're not, please go and watch those videos first. So, on the ODU, we have the same terminology and options as the GBU-38, for instance. We have the same targeting system. Let's remove that. We have the same terminal options, although they're not working at the moment. They will be added later. And the same fusing, safe, deli one, and instant. So we're going to go for instant. Next is a laser bomb, so it has a laser code. If we want to change the laser code, just the same with changing a GBU-12. We're going to go SCS down. We can click on the code there, and we can change our laser code for it there. Just note that at this time, you need to change the laser code in the air. I don't think it works while changing it on the ground, so that could be an annoyance. So let's get airborne and find a target. We're in the air now. The target's about 10 miles in front of us. That is very low for a standoff target, but just to make this video go quicker. Master, air to ground mode. Master arm on. Shift over to the right MFD for our T-pop. On standby, assign TDC. Unsave the laser. Choose the designating laser. We now need to have the T-pod aim at roughly the right area, and we're going to cheat a bit by just going to our HSD. Selecting waypoint one, which we've done, and then designating. We've now got the laser pointed at waypoint one, which is, uh, sorry, the T-pod pointed at waypoint one, which is relatively near the target. We're now going to take over uh, manually and try and find the target, and I can actually see him. He's a moving tank or a, uh, of some kind. And we're going to try and get an automatic point track on him. I'm going to leave my uh, cursor in the way of him, and hopefully... The system will pick up the point track, and it didn't, and that just happens sometimes. Let's try again. All kinds of things that can be affecting this. Let's try a different zoom level. Try that. Um, a bit embarrassing, but it's just the way it goes sometimes. No. You can go in narrow on it, too. No, I don't think it, I'm going to go narrow. I think it's... Oh, there we go. Sometimes, I don't know what... Uh, you guys have to explain that to me. Sometimes it just doesn't work very well. So, we've now got the T-Pod pointing at a moving target. The next step is that we are going to send the information from the T-Pod to the weapon so that we get the symbology for dropping the weapon. Now, it's disputed how this works. We can only really advise to follow the manual. The manual says, press laser ranging here. That takes about two seconds and we'll give a laser range. Directly after that, we push this button here, WP increment, for one second, then release, and then we should have the bomb set up and ready to drop. So let's do the laser range. Ping, wait. Press the command and wait. And we've got our symbology here. I'm just going to pause it so that we can talk about it. This is the symbology that's essentially the same as dropping a normal JDAM like a GBU-38. So we're not going to go through it, but very roughly, the range is counting down. This would be our, our maximum. And as we get closer, and we are fairly close now, it's going to count down. We're currently ranging there. There would be our minimum. We can see that we have no terminal factors applied. And we have our accuracy or our shot efficiency here we want to drop the shot drop the bomb when this reaches 100 to make it as ballistically efficient as possible and the target is 7.1 miles away so let's um pause obviously i'm pressing the weapon reach button to drop the actual bomb so watch that number let it climb up oh it's actually <laughs> it's actually going down so what that's saying is i've actually missed the most optional time because i started so close it's my fault i've missed the optimal time for dropping the bomb but the number 
is still above one or above zero so i'm going to try dropping it anyway and it's going to have to be just a, a very lateral moving bomb so i'm going to unpause i'm going to drop now when you fire the laser again is a bit disputed but for extra safety i'm going to fire the laser now designating laser has a maximum range of 10 miles so you need to be within 10 miles of the target to have that function i'm just set my trim up while i talk there okay as long as the teapot can keep firing on that guy is not more than 10 miles away slant range we should have a bomb that's going to hit you can see the sensor on the front there for the uh, uh for the laser section and the other kit part of the kit is the gbu so down we go quickly check inside make sure everything's cool we haven't flown off target we haven't and it's tracking well Please hit. It's going to hit. Boom! Absolutely beautiful. So as shown there, with a relative release, it's pretty easy. It can be fiddly though. And this probably looks like a really easy video to put together, four minutes video, but this has taken two hours to get to work. It doesn't like certain ranges. It's work in progress. What do you expect? I would say that with a moving target, relative release is how you'd have to do it. So that's GBU 54 with a moving target. September 2020. I hope that's useful and see you later.